thanks for watching. This is Charlie Bynum from Silver Spin Music, and today we're coming to you from the workshop because a year ago we made our first boat liar, the Shetland Goo, and consequently filmed our first video here. So we thought this would be a good location to present a year in progress here at Silver Spoon Music with the current paramount of our longship series, the Dracker Edition. This edition is available in two, three, or four strains with your choice of three scale lengths and your choice of fluorocarbon or horsehair strings. Features include an oak body, steam bent with skeletal reinforcements, a recessed softwood soundboard with smooth reveal, a thin hardwood backer, an oak stringer, specially treated hemp tail gut, and our very own peg leg bridge design. Adapted from the Welsh Croth, this bridge puts sound onto two different woods at the same time, exploiting their tonal differences, giving you more harmonic highs and drudgier, warmer lows. So, in stereo effect, giving you a very direct impact and just a well-rounded tone in general. So, for this instrument and many more, visit the shop on Etsy. Now, I want to take a couple seconds and talk about chalk. This piece of chalk is from the cliffs of Dover in the UK, and in the excess of hundreds of millions of years ago, little tiny organisms died, and as the sea receded, left their skeletons compressed into what we have today as chalk. And the reason I'm bringing it up is I commonly get questions about tuners and how to stop them from slipping, which is a common problem with wooden tuners. First and foremost, you want to put a lot of back pressure in as you put your tuner in. Secondly, they sell stuff called peg dope, which you can buy at the music store, but there is a very economic alternative used by sitar players, which is chalk. So all you do is you simply paint the tuner where it's going to be through the hole. Good solid white layer. Blow off the excess, put it in the hole, and instantly you'll feel the grip created. And what this does is it absorbs moisture as the instrument tends to breathe and swell and it also microfills all the gaps between the hole and the tuner so it just creates a super tight heavy duty fit be sure to blow off the excess though because too much can go a little too far and cause you grief so another thing i want to talk about is tuning you have two kinds of tuning a equals 440 and 432 440 is equal temperament, it's what we use today, and it was adopted in the 50s or 60s, and its idea is that it would more mathematically regulate our mapping of musical understanding. But it kind of misleads us from the truth, because you have A equals 432, which is natural tuning, and that's what we've used for thousands of years before that. That's what Native American flutes, Tibetan singing bowls, an assortment of ind indigenous instruments are just naturally tuned to. And the way to look at it is that music is like a ma mathematical perfection. There have been sound studies done where there's a plate, and on that plate there's grains of sand. And they've tuned to A equals 432 and then tuned to any specific note. And what happens is the grains of sand collect and separate and form geometric patterns very similar to snowflakes. So, imagine that sound is vision and you're walking through the world and everything is just 8 degrees off. It's not that much, but it's enough to cut off your highs and your lows and just give you a generalization of everything that's going on around you and take out a certain, certain amount of depth. So, just if you can find a tuner that lets you set the reference point for A, just set it to A equals 432, and give it a shot, do a little research, compare and contrast, and I would be surprised if you're not also converted. And for these ancient instruments and drone instruments in specific, I highly recommend giving it a shot. So, as always, this is Charlie Bynum from Silverspoon Music. Thank you.